unpredictable, unpopular. America has always undergone many different phases, stages, and changes in a short life to become what it is today. Each generation has had to overcome its own unique challenges. Each generation has had to address social injustices, discrimination, and equality, and join together to solve these problems. One thing is for sure, each generation of Americans has built on the improvement of the previous one. Let me ask you, were the colonists ready to declare independence from the king, parliament, and England, their mother country? Was America ready for its great experiment in freedom and democracy? Were the slaves ready to be freed from bondage? Were Americans ready for the passing of the civil rights protection? Were women ready for the right to vote? Before every major political event that has taken place in the United States, there was always opposition, always dissenters, always those who disagreed, and always those who supported the inequality. I once heard that in order for America to be a great nation, it first must be good. This means that we must be a nation that values justice, that values equality, that values its citizens, and values rights. We have taken the responsibility for the wrongs in our country and history and righted them. America has always been the land of abundant opportunity. This idea is illustrated in our Declaration of Independence, which states that all persons are created equal. And it seems to me that America has always tried to uphold its principles. If equality is really important to us, then I must ask you, is America ready for a black president? Although it seems to me that America is indeed ready for a black president, I should tell you as I stand before you today, there is no consensus on this issue. But I have to say that the time is upon us when such a possibility can become reality. This is a defining, this is a defining moment in our nation's history. As Barack Obama has said, we are the ones we've been waiting for. I'm convinced that it's time to embrace the notion that America is ready for a black president. This, I know for sure. Let me ask you again. Is America ready for a black president? If black means skin color, then I have to ask you, what does skin color have to do with one's ability to govern this country? If the president's primary responsibility is to enforce the Constitution, then what does skin pigmentation have to do with this task? Being black doesn't say anything about a president. Barack Obama is an exceptionally strong person. His ancestors were once this way, and he has known struggle and overcome many obstacles. He has almost done the impossible, which is hold the highest office in this country. But do not be fooled. This isn't about Barack Obama. This is about justice and equal opportunity. I remind you that throughout the history of the United States, many African Americans have stepped up tremendously, holding positions we thought impossible. For example, Thurgood Marshall was the first African American to serve on the Supreme Court in 1967. Other African Americans have followed his example, like Edward Brooke, Barbara Jordan, Jesse Jackson, Tom Atkins, and Cornell West. What do all these figures have in common? They share two attributes. One is skin color, and the other is competence. Skin color should never dictate, determine, define, or direct competence. Proficiency, purpose, and political productivity are never, ever, ever based on pigmentation. But simply, the presidency is not about appearance, but rather principles. A president is a president no matter his or her skin color, eye color, hair color, or ancestry. No matter the president's physical appearance, the job description still remains the same, which is to be the chief executive of the federal government and commander in chief of armed forces. If you don't find my argument persuasive, let me cite a recent poll taken by CBS showing that 68% of America is ready for a black president. A similar poll was conducted in 2000 showing only 38% of Americans were ready for a black president. Over the course of the last eight years, from 2000 to 2008, numbers have increased incredibly, and this is evidence 
that America has taken a significant step forward. The time is right to break the cycle, a cycle that has been accepted without question or complaint, a pattern of white presidents. The presidency takes dedication, determination, and courage to unify the country and bring it to its full potential. And so I ask again, is America ready for a black president? Is America ready for change? Is America ready to overcome yet another challenge and obstacle? Is America ready to practice what it preaches when it says, and I quote, all persons are created equal? If we take this seriously, then the answer is obvious and arguable. The time is now. All changes occur in the present, and we can't afford to procrastinate any longer, for it's a threat to our nation's ideals. The presidency isn't about racial procrastination, it's about equal representation. It's about being true to America's founding promises and principles. It's words and wishes, it's values and voices, the voice of its citizens. Use your voice this November. Thank you.